given his background of being a Christian, what, what do you make of the situation where he was actually on a, a church trip when the incident happened? I, I, to be honest, it is just shocking. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the only word I, I can really think of. It's, it's, it's just shocking. Me and David were very good friends. We went basically everywhere together. Um, I knew David since first form. I still remember the first day of first form when David met me and introduced himself. David was so positive, like you in David's eyes and you just smile. David is the kind of person that you can go to anytime, anywhere. You can even call him and he's doing homework and he will stop him homework and say, You're good? Something happened? You're having a bad day? David is the kind of person where. David is the kind of person who makes you smile. And in come, David always have positive vibes. He could be there having the worst day of life and David could walk through the door, he just look on him. And David look by on him, he had a fist bump and everything. That was David. Right now I still can't believe that David is gone. Up to Saturday night, me and David was talking. He was saying that he was going on a trip tomorrow so he must have to go to bed early. And I was saying, uh, make sure you enjoy yourself. Then I woke up Monday morning to a bunch of missed calls and messages saying, I hear the news, uh, David drowned on a church trip and couldn't believe it. I called more than seven people trying to figure out what happened until eventually I get the full story that he drowned on a church trip. And even to this morning, I was saying, I probably one big joke and I go come to school and walk to the door and see the but David never did it. David wasn't there. I met David in first form. Um, we, wouldn't, we, would, we didn't have a close relationship till fourth form um, when we started to have more classes together. Um, I, I know David because in fourth form, in chemistry class, every class, when I was in the plantation, David would always um, make sure I pay attention. David always looked out for us. He always made sure we was focused in class. David, even as Quan said, if you have a bad day, David was always looking, there, looking out for you. He was that person that everyone loved and cared for, and David has always cared for everybody. When I heard the news yesterday, at yesterday morning, I was literally lost for words. You know, it just struck me. I was literally numb. You know, I didn't eat until maybe sometime in the afternoon. You know, um, I was lost, and I'm still lost for words. As you can see, it is not something that I can. As Russia said, so it's very, it's very heartening, you know, given that the, the type of young man that he is is someone that I could rely on for support, you know, if there is, if I need a student to you know, go to a class and relay some information, he's somebody that I could rely on. He's very helpful, right? very helpful, very respectful and outspoken. So he's somebody that, you know, really was dear to live, live the Ford Farm family. David Minot, a young man known by just about every student, every teacher here at Wilmer's Boys School. A young man who, whose genesis was not the smoothest. In fact, he would have had some difficult early days. Not anything having to do with conduct. Um, financially, it was not uh, a smooth start, but the school rallied around him, and uh, I can tell you, he has been one of our success stories. Only at foot form, but I'm telling you, he has distinguished himself in so many ways. In fact, a few weeks ago, we had our honor roll. We call it the Blue Report here at Wilmers, and uh, he received an upper tier, that's the highest level. Uh, he had worked tirelessly uh, for this. He would have set it as one of his goals to achieve in his fourth form year, and he was successful. He was involved in just about every and anything. As we'd say, if the pan knock, 
David Minot would be somewhere in the midst responding. And uh, he is really a tremendous, uh, very principled young man, very enthusiastic. If you want someone uh, through whose veins you could say maroon and gold blood runs, it is David Minot. I was a friend and classmate of David since fourth form. I met him in first form when we were in um, ISCF and Passion and Purity together. He always asked me if I wasn't coming to meet in um, Mr. Mr. Norman, who is the supervisor for the club. He, he was waiting on me and David was always telling me how I should come and behave myself and serve God more. He was an ambitious and inspiring young man. He motivated me to do a lot of stuff. He wanted to become everything you could think of. He wanted to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, an architect, even a prime minister. He said, when I heard about the news of him passing, I still couldn't believe I was in denial because I talked to him Wednesday and he said when he was leaving school that I should enjoy my break and keep my head up. He's always inspiring people as he sees them and he's always giving a fist bump. Um, even though I'm still in denial that David has passed and we as a family, a school family, we're still sad. David was who I would refer to as an exemplary human, an exemplary Wilmerian, an exemplary young man, a gentleman. David was outgoing. He interacted with everyone. He was kind to everyone. He was always ready with a smile. He was an advocate for his fellow classmates. Anybody in trouble, you know, David saw it and he sought to help to fix. David was fun loving, he was joyful, he was open. He took it upon himself to ensure that the incoming first farmers had a student, a big brother from upper school who would look out for them. He hung out over there and he, as a sub-prefect, um, was really very, very caring and attentive with them. That's just the kind of person he was and he was that person also for, I would say, a cross-section of Wilmers, whether it's students, teachers, parents. David never passed you without saying hello, having a word to say. He was animated. He was, he had manners. He was that young man that you would say was well mannered. Um, and so you felt attached to him. You felt close to him. One of the things I loved about David is he took advantage of opportunities. He placed himself in a position where he could be recognized for um, what he was doing in school and so become a sub-prefect. Uh, last year when we had our first ever Wilma's Boys PTA ch Challenge competition, David was one of the first to enter a chant. He was excited about it um, and he participated. He placed third. He had a brilliant chant. What I loved most about him was how he related to the other competitors. Um, he had that spirit that made everyone feel comfortable. We actually recorded the songs at the Sugar Minot Studios and he ensured that all the fellow competitors felt welcomed. He made sure that all of us as parents, members of the PTA who were there felt welcomed. So do you remember the last encounter you had with him? Yes, yes. What was it like? We, at the PTA, um, treated each year group for Child's Month. We treated them to slushy, a refresher after a long day of school. And so we had the fourth form slushy on the Monday and David was served his slushy. However, on the Wednesday when we had our third form year group slushy, 
I saw David downstairs and he came and he said, oh, I want an extra slushy. Now, of course, they had gotten slushy on the Monday. So, no, David, you know, you can't get. But David was the, the kind of person who you wanted to go an extra mile for, you know. He just had that spirit. And as he walked away, he and another fellow, I saw them and I said, no, man, come back. And he ran back collected the two extra slushes, smile big, and run off. That was my last encounter with him. I did see him the morning of that same day, and he was, I mean, I guess he was telling everybody about it, but he was excited about this church trip, you know? But my last encounter of it was of him smiling, he was happy. He's involved in church activities and such. So oh yes. Could you tell us? Uh, do you know a little bit about his adventure in the Christian? Oh yes. Oh yes. As a matter of fact, last year David received Youth of the Year award at the church. He was the public relations officer for the ISCF at school here. David led by faith. If you interacted with David, you knew he was a Christian. He was the first to pray. On a trip, we had a trip to Maroon Town. We're known into Portland, and David was on the bus. He prayed, he prayed for all the students. He was the first to pray and to give comfort to classmates who had just lost his father. He was he led devotions in class. Um, he was the first to speak to you openly about his faith, his strong belief in God, which he took from his grandmother um, who is a big part and a major influence in his life um, he would just about make himself always available to tell you about Christ and in his character and in his actions you saw Christ in him you saw that he was led by his faith David took advantage of opportunities um, he, in every single way, I would say, was the ideal winner and the saw promise. And so last year at the PTA, we learned of an opportunity for students to receive scholarship. And we, um, I nominated David for that scholarship. David and another young man and they both received it. So there would be often times interaction between he, myself and his grandmother. David is a people person, very caring young man, one who advocates for his peers. I mean, I can recall my last conversation with him on Wednesday before we went on the break was him advocating for one of his peers. Um, about a detention that he thought was unfairly given. And he, we had, I believe, three conversations about it. He was trying to, you know, try to explain to me why I think it was not fair. And so, you know, he is, he's like that. He's loved by everybody. He's a man of God. You know, um, my first encounter with him was him walking into one of my classes when he was in second form. Like he just randomly just walk into the class and he just said good morning um, I just I'm just here to tell you that Jesus loves you and you should continue praying and then he just left he's very outspoken um, as I said he, he's, a, he's an advocate for just about everybody um, and so he's a he's a member of our sub prefect and he, he's friends with everybody there's never a conflict with him and anybody he's always there and he's is one that they could rely on to you know keep them on the right path you know, he's never one to, to shy away you know some people say oh, I don't, i'm not going to say anything if they see their parents doing something that they're not supposed to he's going to tell them no you're not supposed to do that remember we're not supposed to do that you know so he's like that given his background of being a christian what, what do you make of the situation where he was actually on a, a church trip when the incident happened I, I, to be honest, it is just shocking. Um, you know, that's 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 the only word that I can really think of. It's it's, it's shocking. Um, you know, 
but it is life and we have to, to deal with it. Um, honestly, you know, maybe this is just something to, to teach us a lesson. Um, we didn't expect him or our person, you know, given the kind of person he was as a God-fearing person. I would say a good person, you know, to 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 have so soon. So and so I think there is a message in all of this for us to enter our house in all of I think so. One thing about us, we never forget our old Marians. And he is one of those who would have gone on before us. And uh, of course, we'll be seeking to memorialize him in some shape or form. It's something that we'll have to discuss as a, as a team, as a leadership team, and also with the, our stakeholders. Because it's important, once you see someone who is uh, so much a Wilmerian, it is only wise and proper for us to find an excellent way for other young men to, 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 to know about this character, to understand how they can be like a David Maynard. The relationship I had with David, um, we were quite close friends because we did quite together at some point during first and second form, so I knew him on that type of level. From your point of view, who was David? To me, David was a role model to all of us. He was a positive person. He was there for everyone. He always made sure that we all doing the right thing at the right time. He he was just the type of person that you'd love to be around. So how do you feel about the news? Devastated. I was my jaw fell to the ground when I heard the news. I was shocked. I was a classmate to David since first form. And from way back then I could see that He's one of those individuals that's different from the rest. He's the kind of person that will go above and beyond for anything. And I don't know how he was able to do it because he could be passionate, same level of passion about everything and he would do, he'd get involved with as many things as possible. So even up until third form, I remember when we had to select subjects, he was so divided because he enjoyed all of the subjects in third form and he wanted to do all of them but he had to make a selection. And then when I heard the news, honestly, I was a bit surprised when I first heard it and I was disappointed, devastated. And then when I heard how it happened, what, what had gone down about the trip and how he drowned. I just was furious, I'm still furious. Because it just feels like it's something that he just needed to take a few different steps and he could have prevented all of this from happening. So, eventually though, like all, all wounds will heal and I'm sure everyone, my classmates, my friends, I'm sure we'll all recover given enough time.